Uh, as a scientist, I know that global warming doesn't really exist at all in any sense of significance. Well, thanks for the reassurance, John. Only one problem. Hello, you're not a scientist. You got a degree in media studies and became a TV weatherman. And while you claim to be a meteorologist, the American Meteorological Society disagrees. You're not on the list of certified broadcast meteorologists. In other words, TV weather personalities with degrees in meteorology. And the biggest irony of the lot... There are thousands who signed a petition, 19,000 on a, on a petition against global warming. Coleman keeps promoting a petition of scientists against anthropogenic climate change, but his lack of a science degree means he isn't even qualified to sign it. Well, Lord Christopher Monckton, former uh, science advisor to Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Christopher Monckton has a degree in journalism. So how did he become Margaret Thatcher's science advisor? Answer, he didn't. He was her economic policy advisor. We'll see more of Monckton and his ideas in a future video. So if we're going to look at the consensus on climate change, we should start by defining which group of people is supposed to be reaching that consensus. Since Coleman and Monckton are so keen to pretend they're scientists, they seem to think that that's the criterion. And so do a lot of other people who cite this petition as evidence that there's no consensus on anthropogenic climate change. After all, scientists are supposed to know all there is to know about every field of science. Well, brains, your phenomenal mind made all this possible. In Thunderbirds, Brains was able to turn his hand at everything from the dubious aerodynamics of Thunderbird 2 to the hydrology of New York City. Now, uh, underground streams d do exist, but they've never been considered a, a threat. Brains may have been an expert in every aspect of science, but his ass was made of plastic. Real-life scientists aren't experts on everything. They have to specialize, and the more they specialize, the greater their expertise. A wood engineer knows a lot about wood engineering, but that doesn't mean he understands atmospheric physics. So when Stephen C. Zilkowski, who is a wood engineer, signs his name to a petition telling us there's no evidence that carbon dioxide causes catastrophic heating of the earth, he's simply stating his belief, based on whatever he's read. We have no idea what that is, but it's certainly not this series of papers explaining the cause of catastrophic warming during the late Permian. And why should Earl M. Argard, a professor of biology at Southern Adventist University, have read the paper either? In between Argard and Zilkowski, the first and last names on the petition, are an assortment of metallurgists, botanists, agronomists, organic chemists, and so on, who tell us they haven't seen any evidence for CO2 causing catastrophic heating either. The vast majority of scientists who signed the petition have never studied climatology and don't do any research into it. It doesn't matter if you're a PhD. A PhD in metallurgy just makes you better at metallurgy. It doesn't transform you into some kind of an expert in paleoclimatology. Since this is so obvious, why is it that so many people are convinced that Thunderbirds is real and every scientist is brains? Even an intelligent journalist like John Stossel falls into this misconception. 17,000 scientists signed a petition saying there's no convincing evidence that greenhouse gases will disrupt the Earth's climate. 31,000 scientists are saying that global warming is beneficial and it's natural. It's not caused by humans. Okay, let me try this again. Since even the dumbest reporters must at some time have contracted an embarrassing medical condition and visited a hospital, why is the specialization of sciences such a hard concept to grasp? If you had a skin rash, you wouldn't go to a climatologist to be cured any more than you'd go to a doctor to learn the facts about climate. And surely we understand that medical experts, like all scientists, specialize further within the field of medicine. With a skin rash, you wouldn't go to an immunologist or an audiologist, a pediatrician, a respirologist, a gynecologist, an obstetrician, a cardiologist, a neurologist, or any other of the medical disciplines. You'd go to a dermatologist. The same goes for fields like meteorology and geophysics, which also encompass a huge number of specialist fields. Most graduates in these subjects don't go on to study climate. A lot of meteorologists become weather forecasters or pilots or teachers or homemakers or business people. I know a lot of geophysicists who specialize in measuring seismic and magnetic anomalies in mining exploration. One of them runs a bar in Madrid. So the petition's suggestion that everyone with a degree in meteorology or geophysics knows a lot about climate change or is familiar with all the research that's been done is patent crap. 
To people unfamiliar with the way science works, this can be confusing. Bob Carter, for example, is described as a paleoclimatologist in this U.S. Senate committee report, but since his Ph.D. was in paleontology and nearly all his research work has been in the field of stratigraphy, why not more accurately call him a stratigrapher? Phil Chapman was described as a geophysicist when he wanted to promote his thoughts on climate, but his bio on NASA's website shows that he was a physicist who specialized in aeronautical instrumentation. Tim Ball has a variety of titles, 28 years professor of climatology at the University of Winnipeg, 32 years as professor of climatology at the University of Winnipeg, a former climatology professor. Professor Tim Ball of the Department of Climatology at the University of Winnipeg. Okay, here's where you slipped up, Tim. There is no climatology department at the University of Winnipeg. Sorry, that was fairly easy to verify. Climatology was just one small element of the geography course that you taught. Your major was in geography, and you were a geography professor. So you weren't a professor of climatology. And according to your own biography, you were a professor at the University of Winnipeg from 1988 to 1996. So that's eight years, not 28 or 32. Of course, he's belittling geography. No, the problem isn't that anyone's belittling geography. The problem is that you're inflating eight years of geography, a perfectly respectable subject, into 32 years of climatology, which is something completely different. And you got caught out. Ball's only academic contribution to climate science was a handful of papers, mostly on the historical weather records of the Hudson's Bay Company in central Canada, and mostly published in the 1980s. None of that research addressed or even tried to challenge the accepted link between CO2 and global warming. If Ball hadn't been so heavily promoted on television, most climate scientists would never have heard of this obscure geography professor. If all this sounds a bit negative and dismissive, it's because people with few qualifications and little research history would never be promoted as experts in any other scientific field. So why do the media insist on lowering the standards for climate science? Of course, Al Gore isn't an expert either. Neither is Leonardo DiCaprio or Danny Glover or any of the activists who go on television urging action on global warming. What actors, politicians and lawyers believe is as irrelevant to our understanding of climate science as the beliefs of media experts and journalists, or for that matter, my opinions and beliefs. Even the IPCC is irrelevant. What matters is what's shown through properly published research, which is why it's the researchers who are considered the experts. And that's true of all scientific disciplines. The researchers not only have to have studied their subjects, they also have to keep up with new developments in their field through reading scientific journals and attending seminars. Of course, climate change theory, like any scientific theory, comprises evidence from a number of different fields. It depends on input from dendrochronologists and glaciologists, as well as statisticians and petrologists. Each specialist can speak to his own field of expertise, but if he starts spouting opinions on something outside that field, then he's not speaking from a position of expertise. If you want to know what a real expert climatologist looks like, here's one. John Christie has a PhD in atmospheric sciences and a long track record of published research in climate change. And he's still actively engaged in climate research. Here's another. Richard Linson has a PhD in atmospheric physics. He's been a researcher in meteorology and climatology since 1966. Like Christie, he has a long and solid history of published research into climate change, not stratigraphy or electronics. The problem is, real climatologists like these who oppose the accepted climate model have been dwindling in number over the last 20 years. So if you're an American journalist who wants to use expert climatologists to question the accepted climate change model, the choice is now pretty limited. John Christie, Richard Lindzen, Patrick Michaels, and Roy Spencer. Posed as a result of Category 4 and 5 hurricanes in the Atlantic base in a completely futile attempt to camera and say that the central tendons now become politicized. Solar energy and wind. Two for the ten years before that, and point four three for the ten years before that. So the question of who's an expert in any scientific discipline, including climatology, is really very simple and long established. If these so-called experts have to lie or are vague about their resume, if nothing is ever outside their wide field of expertise, if they spend more time talking about politics and economics than hard science, and if they make assertions completely unsupported by any research, chances are they're not a real expert. But if you still find all this confusing, don't worry. Just be reassured by the prognosis of the man who's not a scientist, 
but plays one on TV. The, the Earth is going to, the climate's going to change with cycles of the sun and with ocean currents, and we're all going to do just fine.